Okay, to be honest, I'm not the best mixing engineer, but you guys asked for it, so I guess I'm gonna show you how I mix my beats coming from out of Beatmaker 3. Bolo! All right, what's good, you guys? I am back. I am back from my vacation. I am back from AAU basketball with my daughter. I am back, and I'm going to show you guys how I mix beats from Beatmaker 3. The way I do it is I actually export my beats in a high bit rate, of course, so I can send it over to Logic, and I do my thing in Logic. So um, you can mix beats in Beatmaker 3, but mm, to me, it just doesn't sound that good yet. I'm pretty sure it's going to get better, but as of right now, it's, it's okay at best. If you need to do some stuff on the fly, I'm pretty sure you can get it sounding pretty good. I use Logic for now. I'm going to show you guys how I mix this certain beat and uh, show you some of the techniques I use. To tell you the truth, I don't think I'm the best mix engineer like that. I just try to get the job done. Don't criticize me and, and don't critique me too much either because I'm just doing this because you guys kind of asked for it. I want to show you some techniques that I use to get my beats placed. So uh, without me talking so much, let's go ahead and get to the tutorial right now. Okay, so I have the session pulled up and basically this is everything. Um, let me pull up the mixer screen so you can see what it looks like on the mixer screen. And I want to go through and just kind of explain what I did and why I try to use the more simplistic method of uh, mixing. So um, as you can see, of course, I got my tag, which I put a tape delay on that. I have the uh, first synth, which was like a bell synth. Um, basically, just a spread and a EQ, which is called proximity. This is a dope EQ. This is actually the same instrument, but I put an M rhythmizer on it, which basically the M rhythmizer is basically exact clone of gross beat. Uh, made by Melda Productions. They're a great company. They make a lot of great products. So if you get anything from them, they're they're really dope. This is uh just made my life a lot easier on Logic. I did it at half speed. Actually made basically a tape stop in here as well. I did two instances of it because I like to have total control over it. I use the same spread and EQ on it. Um, this is another synth right here. I just use the M rhythmizer and use the EQ on it. Uh, I actually used the EQ that came with Logic on that. This is the original sound. I just EQ'd it out. Uh, some of the other percussive sounds, I didn't use nothing on it because they sounded good. And on the bass, I used some saturation and another EQ on it. And I just used on the Master uh, Pro L2. So let's just kind of go through the sounds and hear how they sound without some of the processing. And you'll see that basically processing is just something that you want to add to it that you can kind of hear because... It doesn't really sound that much different from like the EQ and stuff that I add on there, but it makes a very it makes very small changes, very subtle changes to it that it just kind of makes the beat sound better. So um, let's go ahead and listen to some of the sounds. So this is the original sound right here. So let's turn those off, and this is how it sounds coming directly out of Beatmaker. Basically, that's it. That's how it came directly out of Beatmaker. This is how it sounds when I add um, the spread effect to it to just make the sound a little bit wider and the EQ to take out a little lower and add some top, some top end to it. And as you can see, it's very, very, very subtle so i'm gonna kind of go through and so you can hear the differences i'm gonna turn them on and off as i go so as you can see when i add the spread it just it just kind of gives us it gives the sound a little bit of width and the proximity just adds. It takes out the bottom end and adds a little bit of high end. It just gives it a little bit more clarity. So it sounds pretty cool. All I did with this next sound right here is, solo this, is basically use the same effects, but I just add the M rhythmizer to it and I added that tape stop effect to it. So let's play that. And 
and that's basically it. Same process, just added some character stuff to it to to give that sound basically a different sound. So I just doubled up my sounds, my synthesizer sounds in here just by adding the M rhythmizer to it, and it just gives it gives it a totally different feel. All right, so let's go to this other synthesizer sound, and this is how it sounded just by itself. And this is how it sounds when you add the EQ. It just took some bottom end out. All right, so I'm gonna play it back and forth and see if you can kind of hear the difference. Makes a difference. It took a lot of that low end rumble out. And the reason why I wanted to take some of that stuff out is because of the bass, because we had to add a little bit of the bass uh, into this because if you don't know, some of us already know that Beatmaker 3, when you do export, it does thin out some of the sounds. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. Um, in the case of bass, it's a bad thing. Basically what I did from there was I did the same sound, I add M rhythmizer to it, and I uh, slowed it down 50%, and so this is how it sounds. And that's pretty much it. Okay, the uh, next sounds, um, I didn't add any effects to them. Um, what sound is this? I believe it's the clap. All I did was just gain the clap up a little bit. I, th I thought the clap was a little bit behind everything, so I wanted to turn it up because I really wanted to hear that clap. And uh, let's go ahead and see what the clap is sounding like. Here we go. Now this is one of the cases where it's like the sound isn't as thick as I want, but I didn't want the clap to be that fat. I wanted it to have like a um, a thinner sound because of all the other sounds that's around it. So I just left it like how it was. So I just left it and just turned it up. The next sound is, looks like a hi-hat. In the case of the hi-hat, same exact thing. I just left it where it was because one important thing is when you do add these tracks into Logic, when you export them, hopefully you export them in 24-bit or 32-bit float to get the best results, which you should do that. What I do is I take everything and I pull all the faders down to where I get it, to where it's not clipping. And by the time I get done adding these effects, I want it somewhat hot to where I don't have to use so much gain in the uh, limiter. I just, so a lot of these sounds, I just keep just like how they are because if they sound good, they just sound good. I don't need to add nothing to them. I just leave it just like how it is because at the end of the day, too much EQ and stuff can either add too much stuff to it or it could take away too much. And if it just sounds good, I just leave it like how it is. I did the exact same thing on this open hat, left it where it was. Um, let's see what the next sound is. It's like a Congo bongo type thing. Sounded good. Didn't think it needed nothing to it. So personally, I thought it was it was fine where it was. So I didn't add anything else to it. Um, the next thing, and as we can see, is the bass. And the bass, unfortunately, was a little thin. The bass is always thin coming out of Beatmaker 3. I think the iOS devices are getting better, like handling this type of stuff. But I think just the sound engine, when it exports stuff out, it's not giving it that beef that we're accustomed to on laptops. So you have to do a few things. It's not much, but um, it's just basically to taste. What I what I did is, uh, in this case, I added some saturation to it, and I added a EQ bump around 30 hertz. So let's hear the bass without that. Sounds pretty cool. So let's see how it sounds with the saturation on it. And there's going to be a gain in level 
with the saturation or they say a perceived gain level because it's adding harmonics to the uh, bass. So I just wanted to kind of dirty it up a little bit and just give a little bit more character so it can kind of punch through uh, smaller speakers. That's dirty. That's real dirty. So what I did next is, let me open this up so you can see the plug in. So I just added just a little bit to it, some harmonics to it. This is actually a free plug-in with, um, with Melda Productions. Um, only thing is it's gonna show this little thing at the bottom, but I'm actually gonna just buy it because I actually like it. So sooner or later you'll see me with this bought. Um, the M Rhythmizer, I did buy that. That's that's something I needed, so I went and bought that. It was only like fifty dollars. Um, I got it off of a uh, uh, what plug-in boutique. I got it from Plugin Boutique. Um, dope, dope plug-in. All right. So next thing that I did was I added the fab filter to it, and I just just cut off, rolled off a little bit of uh, stuff I didn't need. Cut off uh, below twenty hertz. Didn't do a full cut off. I just did something, you know that will just kind of take a little bit low in out and I just bumped it up three dBs at 30 hertz and then I actually turned it down because it was too loud it was clipping once I did that so I just turned it down so we wouldn't have no digital clipping going on so um, it's actually gonna be a little bit lower than what you heard before with the saturation on it so let's play that back Basically, that gives me the meat to the bass that I kind of like in this beat. Next thing is the kick. And the kick I just left alone because it didn't need to be too beefy because the bass was kind of more beefed up. And uh, I just left it how it was. So this is the kick. And it sounded good to me. So I just left it like that. So this is the kick and the bass together. Um, I'm going to turn the bass on and off. I didn't do it last time. But I'm going to turn the bass on and off so you can hear the kick and bass correlation uh, with and without the plugins in it. Sounds sounds better. Sounds a little bit better. I like it. Um, so that's basically it. That's how I mix the whole beat. And uh, let me play everything back, and I'm going to show you guys what I did inside of the uh, Pro L2. I did absolutely nothing. I just left the standard settings in, and uh, this is what it basically looks like when you pull it up. Attack and release is, is basically the basic setup. Only thing I do change in here is my metering. I always do LUFS because it actually gives you a real, true visualization. Visualization. It just gives you a real, true view of where your um, your loudness is hitting. And rather than, you know, I used to use RMS meters a lot, and I just use regular peak meters before I use RMS, but LUFS is where you want to get it at. As you can see, his CD level is negative 9 and, you know, below and usually um, Spotify, you want to have that negative 14 because um, they're either going to turn you up or if you get too loud, they're going to turn you down. But I try to keep mine around negative 9. Well, no, 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 no. I try to keep mine around negative 11, negative 10 on mine. And I just kind of watch the, um, you know, I just try to kind of watch everything like the gain reduction meters to make sure I'm not reducing it too much because I don't want my beats to sound squashed. I want a lot of dynamics in my beats. So I just kind of keep messing with things until I get it to where I want it at. So um, I just had to gain it maybe like 3 dBs on here and uh, I just left everything regular. So let's play the beat a um, little bit through the chorus and see how it sounds.
All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, let me know.